That's Malice Lete for being disbarred from practicing law after an application that was brought by the Legal Practice Council to either suspend or strike the advocate from the role. The matter is based on 22 allegations of misconduct. Defoe was representing four of the five accused in the Senzo Meiwa murder trial, but withdrew in rather dramatic fashion, you may recall, in July. He was also arrested right at the end of proceedings before the culmination in his departure from the matter. But these complaints aren't necessarily related to that at all, in fact, according to the LPC. Let's get reaction now and speak to legal expert, Advocate Pizzo Mbutle. Advocates, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time. So, given just the, the seriousness of the allegations of misconduct against uh, Advocate, therefore, if it's still appropriate to refer to him as such, was this the expected outcome? Well, thank you, Tamikila, and welcome to, uh, thank you for the listeners as well. Um, the, given the seriousness of the complaints, I mean, there were on the papers 22 allegations and complaints against him. Um, it wasn't too surprising, the inevitable outcome. It's obviously a sad day when a legal practitioner is struck from the role. Um, but in circumstances where such action is warranted, then, you know, there isn't much that can be done. Mm. And 22 complaints, as you say, among the allegations are issues to do with alleged misconduct, corruption, unethical behavior, misappropriation of funds. You wonder, given the seriousness of those complaints, why it is that the list was allowed to grow to 22. How quickly are those sort of issues often picked up and dealt with? Well, I mean, the first step is obviously for the complainants being the clients to lodge a complaint with the LPC. The LPC then um, gives the legal practitioner an opportunity to um, give their side of the story. They then, if the response is satisfactory, then the matter isn't taken any further. But if the LPC is of the opinion that uh, disciplinary um, action is warranted, then it's um, transferred over to the investigations department who then give a finding. Based on those findings, the matter can then subsequently be taken to court depending on the seriousness for either the suspension or the removal of the legal practitioner. I'll get to that in a moment. So at this point, I mean, I was saying just in the phrasing of my first question to you, do we still refer to him as advocate? Therefore, I know he has to hand back his certificates, etc. Does he just go back now to being a regular member of society? Well, logic would dictate because the um, the court order is what enrolls you as a an advocate that the title unfortunately no longer applies. It obviously doesn't take away his LLB qualifications and he can practice if he's found fit and proper in any other forum, just not as a legal practitioner. And let's go back and talk about why, for example, um, lawyers are taking such rigorous checks when it comes to issues of ethical conduct, um, the handling of people's funds. I mean, in some cases, he was accused of accepting monies but not actually representing the people concerned. Yes, I mean, the, you know, the oath that is taken by, by lawyers is quite a serious one. And they, we are actually, you know, officers of the court. And, you know, there's a high... Um, moral and ethical standing which lawyers um, are bound to adhere to and in circumstances where one falls short of such standards then the question that the court asks and before you know anybody can be struck off is whether you are fit and proper to practice as a legal practitioner and that involves a, a range of, of characteristics and so unfortunately in his case he was found not to be such a fit and proper person. Mm. And Advocate Mbutle in terms of the future, once you've been struck off in this way, can you come back later? Well, there, if, there are provisions for a legal practitioner who's either been suspended or struck off to come back. That obviously depends on, you know, how you conducted yourself during the actual um, application to strike you, whether you participated and whether you've shown remorse at the point of, you know, re-enrolling um, or requesting to be re-enrolled. I think the minimum waiting period is five years. And after that, you have to show that you are rehabilitated for whatever you are struck off for. for. So, for example, if you were, if you mismanage people's money, that you've attended some financial literacy course specific to attorneys. And ultimately, the question will then be asked at the point of you seeking readmission is whether you are a fit and proper person at that point and whether you've been rehabilitated sufficiently to warrant your enrollment as a legal practitioner. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, his situation career-wise would perhaps be made more grave if criminal investigation and prosecution is pursued on some of these charges, especially as relates to people's money. Am I right? 
Yes, I mean, it just adds another layer for you to try and, you know, overcome at the point of your readmission if there is such a thing. So at the point of your release, you can apply for um, your re-enrollment. Um, however, it, it, you know, if there is a criminal um, action against you and, and you've been convicted, then there are slim to none chances of you being allowed to practice once more as a legal practitioner. So if those avenues are pursued, then, um, yeah, it, it, it's almost the end of the road for him. And he can challenge us or not? Um, well, you can't, you can't really challenge the criminal proceedings. If you're found guilty, you're found guilty. But, no, not the criminal you know, proceedings per se. I was referring to him now being struck off as a practicing advocate. I mean, he can appeal the decision, but he'd have to give reasons as to why he didn't defend the original proceedings which took place today. And so that's the first hurdle he'd have to, he'd have to overcome. So that in its own, the, you know, the staying away from proceedings which directly and adversely impact you, which seek to strike you off, you know, any, any ordinary person would want to be actively involved and to try and defend those complaints and challenges against them as, as far as possible. Right, as you say, during those hearings, he in fact, uh, some of the reporting from people who are in the court did not necessarily address the allegations against him specifically and spoke about how it was a broader witch hunt by people in the authorities, but without providing proof of who would have brought that sort of agenda against him. But for today, uh, Advocate Peter Mbutle, thank you very much for clearing that up for us. Thank you.